Hi everybody, I'm Ben from Mixergy and I'm here today to present a few videos on the installation of the Mixergy Smart Hot Water Cylinder. If you're watching this video, you're one of our approved installers who's been commissioned to install a tanker to customer's property. Please remember if you are installing the tank as an unvented system, you are going to need your G3 unvented qualification. And to ease the commissioning process, please download our Mixergy installer app. This will also grant you some Mixergy installer benefits. Mixergy has been saving households significant amounts of money on their domestic hot water bills and also reducing carbon emissions. This is why the Mixergy tank is fast becoming the go-to choice for not only retrofit, but also new builds. The Mixergy tank is very much like a traditional cylinder with only a couple of things to take into consideration, and that is installing solar PV or installing a heat pump. We'll go through everything you need to know about installing the Mixergy tank in these videos, but if you do have any questions, don't hesitate to ask us or call us. When installing a Mixergy tank, there are a few things that you need to take into consideration. The first one is positioning, so we need to make sure that the airing cupboard is of a suitable size. The measurements for all our Mixergy tanks can be found on the website or in the manual. The second one is the actual orientation of the tank. You'll notice on the tank that what we've done is we've positioned all of the controls in one quadrant of the circle that represents the tank. Make sure that is pointing towards the door for accessibility. If you are soldering your pipework in the airing cupboard to the Mixergy, please make sure that all the pipework has been cleared of any debris and any flux residue. You will also need a cold mains pipe running to the airing cupboard to supply the tank with cold water but please fit a drain off valve here too, as it will help with future maintenance. Mixergy do supply the parts for an unvented installation, including the expansion vessel, the multi-block, and the tun dish. But please refer to your G3 unvented regulations guide for the installation of these parts and the correct running of the discharge pipe. For a traditional vented installation, you need to make sure that the header tank is of a suitable size and in a suitable position this will normally be in the loft or anywhere else above the tank, depending on where it's been installed. You also need to check the connections on the pump and the temperature and pressure relief valve mounted on the tank, as sometimes these connections can work loose during transit. And the final thing to consider is the wiring of the tank. Make sure that you're using a suitable wiring centre, positioned correctly in the airing cupboard, not too far away from where the tank is. With regards to wiring, the main Mixergy control has five cables coming out of the left-hand side of the box. Two of these cables will be pre-wired, so you don't need to worry about those. You will notice that the three remaining cables that concern you, the installer, are clearly labelled. Especially the indirect cable, which on there you can see that the black is labelled as common, the brown is labelled as number one, you're normally open, and your grey is labelled as number two, normally closed. The first cable that we are looking at is the main supply. This requires a 16 amp dedicated MCB supply and it also requires a 20 amp rated double pole switch. We do try and avoid using a fuse spur if possible. The second cable we're looking at is the indirect control. This is essentially a cylinder thermostat. So the black is your common, that will go to a permanent live. Your grey is your normally closed or hot water off. And if you're not using this, please isolate it to make it safe as it will be live when the, ta when the tank is not calling for heat. And the brown wire is your normally open or your call for heat. This will usually go to the brown wire of your domestic hot water two port valve. The indirect cable can also and will also be used for the heat pump interface. But if you're doing a heat pump install, we shall come to that later on. The third and final cable is the only black cable on the box. This is the timer control cable. This is if the customer still wants to use their existing control, something like a hive or a nest, and all this will do is it will supply a switch live on the brown wire to the Mixergy tank. Bear in mind that if you are using this timer control cable, whenever it is energized, it will override any settings that are in the Mixergy app. Heat pumps are a great solution for the right property, which is why all Mixergy tanks come heat pump ready with two extra ports towards the bottom of the tank. This is great for the customer, because in the future, if they want to add a heat pump into their system, all you need to do as an installer is get hold of the heat pump kit, 
go back to the property and connect the two together. The only difference is when using a heat pump because of the low temperature output, you need to heat the tank to 100% rather than using our top-down heating method. So we have designed an external plate heat exchanger with a larger surface area, which helps increase the efficiency and the COP of the install by up to 10%. If you are considering fitting a mixergy tank with a heat pump, there are a few things that you need to bear in mind. The first one is the distance between the heat pump and the mixergy. Obviously, the closer together, the better, as this will help from heat loss from the length of pipework. Second one is the routing of the pipework from the heat pump to the mixer G. Ideally, you want to be running this internally to the property. The third thing to look for is clearances inside the airing cupboard. You need to consider the space available around the tank as the heat pump kit is an add-on unit. And the last thing to consider is the heat pump kit does need its own dedicated 3 amp supply, in addition to the dedicated 16 amp supply for the general mixer G control. Solar PV is a great energy source for the household, and Mixergy really shines when we can connect into that. The household has two options to make the most efficient use of that energy that's being generated. If the household doesn't already have a PV diverter, or the solar panels are being installed after the Mixergy has been fitted, you can order one of our tanks which is referred to as PV Embedded. This means it has one of our own PV diverters already connected to the tank and wired in. This will store the excess solar PV energy that would normally be sent back to the grid and use it to heat the hot water in the tank. The rates for selling electricity back to the grid when generated by solar power are often very low, so it makes sense to use that power to heat your hot water. When the customer chooses one of our Mixergy diverters, it opens up even more options inside the Mixergy app, such as how much energy to divert, when the cutting threshold is, and at what temperature you want to heat the tank to. As the Mixer GPV diverter is already pre-installed to the tank, it's very, very easy to install. The only thing you need is a hardwired Ethernet connection from the PV diverter itself down to the electric meter where your CT clamp will be fitted. Some households will buy and install our Mixer G tank after they've had a third-party diverter fitted, such as a MyEnergy Eddy or a Solar iBoost. In this case, they will need a Mixer G solar PV switch. Our PV switch converts our immersion heater from a single 3 kilowatt feed to a dual feed. The first of these is the standard 3 kilowatt feed, and the second one ranges from 100 watts right the way up to 3 kilowatts coming from the third party diverter. This means that we can accept all those variants of voltages into our immersion heater. When installing the mixed PV switch, there are a few things you need to take into consideration. The first one is where to mount the PV switch itself. Now you can mount it on the tank, or you can mount it on the wall near the tank. The second one is to take into consideration the fact that you're gonna to have to run a cable from the PV diverter into the PV switch. And the third one is there's a little bit of wiring that you need to change inside the Mixer G itself, but we'll cover that on a separate video. Thank you very much for watching, and if anyone has any feedback, don't hesitate to contact us. If you visit www.mixerg.co.uk, you'll be able to find all our contact details and lots of information on the tanks for installers and customers alike. And remember, if you are working on gas, electricity or water or any combination of the three, please work safely.